Back in the 1800s when I transitioned. And we're bringing trans mask history it's forward, true. okay? It is. And I'm here yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody was really talking about trans people in general, let alone trans masculine. It's like we did not exist. Come on. Trans men as a whole are a pretty good looking group of men. Come on, I'm the Virgo, I'm the business guy. There's the face. What this person, of which we speak of, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, <laughs> of who shall not be named, it was crashing and burning. It was not his money, it was all my money. Wow. Okay. Right? Oh, child. Right? Blossom yeah. can answer that for you. Oh! <laughs> This is the Transparency Podcast Show. Welcome to the Transparency Podcast. My name is Shane Ivan Nass, and I'm with your co-host, Blossom Brown, which I still have not yet to learn my name, Blossom. What? This is like the fourth episode, and I keep messing up my name. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and then you forgot it's Blossom C. Brown. It is. C. It is with a C. And you know Dang. what? It's also Black History Month as well. Oh. So we're celebrating in more ways than one on this episode. <laughs> I have an amazing guest today. Honestly, somebody that I've known for... God, I feel like a decade or longer than that. And it's also an icon in the trans community and a trans masculine community, which is extremely important, as you know, to me. And I wanted to uplift them today. Leon, how the hell are you doing? And welcome to the show. Welcome. I'm doing well. Thank you both for having me. Yes. Thrilled to be here. <laughs> you. Appreciate it. So what were Do we it. talking about earlier? Mushrooms? <laughs> <laughs> no, we just jumped a right good in. Good one. <laughs> just jumped right in. Yes, I own a cannabis delivery service. Yes. Um, and... I've been in the field of cannabis on my company for nine years, and um, I really believe in the properties of microdosing mushrooms. Oh, I yeah. sell them. People ask me a lot, is it legal? It's not legal like Prop 64. It's it's that really nice gray area where we could get things done like Prop 215, like free, so it's not illegal. Yeah. I love that you're quoting 215 because most <laughs> yeah. folks that are on like legal cannabis, they have oh, no they idea what, yeah, they yeah. don't even know the history of cannabis. And that's cool that like trans mask folks are kind of a part of that history as well too. So. Right, right. So um, it that Prop 215 stands for the Compassionate Act Law. I did a lot of work in my art career and with ACT UP in New York City and around in and around AIDS. And then also um, I also did a lot of work uh, you know, I'm old. I I was like a counselor in rehab and worked at Brahman Hospital and stuff and saw a lot of people in our community. Yeah. Um, also, you know, struggling with, with drugs and stuff, you know. You've done a I lot have of work. History. Like you've, you've been so around. if you combine those and you take that, it really is the uh, safer, you know, easier, softer path of healing our community. And I like to get high. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. high is a vibe, right? Yeah, you know, it's self care. You know, it's that. important to self care, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, Leon, I wanted to bring you here, honestly, because again, it's really important to highlight a lot of the stuff that trans mask folks have done. Our history has been erased far too often, and your photography um, is one of the first things that I noticed about you. It's something that really like hit my uh, radar. It's so beautiful the way that you you film bodies and you like you empowered especially trans mass folks to feel beautiful within their body and I just wanted to hear you expand more on like where did you start from that like how did you what said I'm going to pick up a camera and I'm going to make a change in the world because I really feel like you have thank you I, I appreciate that um so my my whole journey um started I've always been I consider myself you know I'm an activist and Art is my vehicle, and it's always been like that. Uh, all of my um, series, even starting, I was known as a, you know, like a le lesbian, like erotic photographer, um, which was very political at the time. The women weren't showing their bodies, weren't, they weren't allowed to be like that. They weren't allowed to dress sexy. There was the whole thing. This was like the early 80s, you know, going into the 90s. They barely got credit cards, really. Right, yeah. 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 So to to say that, you know, one, I am against the patriarchy. However, I get to be feminine. I get to have sexual sexual identity. You, you know, it can't be one side or the other. So, so even starting political like that. So all of my work was like very feminist related and political. I did a lot of work for ACT UP. Uh, I had, was part of... Um, Art Positive, there were two main 
uh, groups, art groups. Um, so there was um, Grand Fury and Art Positive, and we still have, we're in a show, the work of uh, Art Positive is in a show coming up again in a few months. Okay, so then fast forward, it's really about me and my community and showing the world what I know, and I know how we're special, and I know how important and different it is, and um, documenting that. That's why I consider myself like a documentarian. Yeah. I hope that they're nice art. I hope it, it you know, as to come into good artwork, you know, I'm hope. But I'm really like an activist and a documentarian. So as I transitioned, which was also very early on, um, and there was- In the 1900s, correct? Yes. <laughs> Allegedly. Yes. I, I am, vamp you know, I am a vampire. It, Ooh. You guys knew that, right? Yes. yes. I've got, yeah, it's very difficult. I'm going to have to get out of these lights and very <laughs> So yeah, so right. back, yeah, back in the 1800s when I transitioned, you know, there was no- Listen, we're bringing trans mask history forward, true. okay? It, <laughs> and I'm here yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, it was really important, and it wasn't seen. And so really, with Death of My Daughter, which I think was like really yeah. a big breakthrough, and that was in 2009. So nobody was really talking about trans people in general, let alone trans masculine. It's like we did not exist. There was original plumbing, yeah, and that was amazing, and that that was it. Yeah. You know, there was, if, if there nothing. was nothing else, you no. know, there was Lauren and his physique book, um, which came and went very quickly. And that was, that was very early on. Um, original plumbing was at the same time I, I, I was, but, um, that, that was it. So the thing about death of my daughter what, was two things. When, when my mother really did announce, you know, that I was dead to the family and they just couldn't wrap their head around it and, and all of that. And I felt that because I was with all queer people and mainly I was married to a, you know, lesbian who is, you know, her license plate says Les Ride. I mean, she's very much a lesbian. <laughs> Stone Cold Butch. Yeah, you yeah. know, like, very, well, very femme. And yeah. that was one thing because I only went out with femmes and with her, she was saying, and a lot of femmes are like this, well, I'm with a very masculine. I didn't transition like a lot of people are like, you don't really look that different. The hair went from the top of your head to the bottom of your face. I really don't see that much of a difference. So I was always, always like, luckily, like I, I feel an right. athlete yeah. and, you know, very straight, you know, muscular and, yeah. and you know, just kind of Giving a boy. gender man. Yeah, I was yeah. always like a, yeah. a yeah. guy. So anyways, but she used to say, and I didn't really realize this, plus I don't hold somebody's identity, you know, you're taking away my identity because when we're not together, I'm very much, you know, queer. Yeah. Now that you're a guy and you look like a guy and you pass as a guy because I am a guy, mm -hmm. um, she's like, but then you've taken away my identity. Yeah. Now, two big problems like with that, being that I have a degree in psychology and she's a therapist, yeah. is you don't hold anybody else's identity. That's your own identity to hold. Yeah. And two, being a femme in this community, like unless, seriously, unless you're in nuanced in New York or you're in San Francisco, girlfriend in LA, everybody thinks you're a straight girl. They don't even think femmes really? exist, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's not even a, a play. So I'm like, it, and there's no lesbian bars. I mean, the one that we had Oxwood in is gone. Yeah, like yeah. there's yeah, there's like yeah. yeah so what, what you, 27 in the entire country, I believe that there's lesbian yeah, bars there's like left, hardly like anything wow. left. And there's 67,000 bars throughout the entire United States. It's crazy. What? Yeah, yeah, and the Lexington in San Francisco, which is amazing, and yeah, and um, also good guys in this show that I'm. That I'm in in June. Uh, maybe you know him, uh, Ace Morgan, who's in San Francisco and a photographer. And, yeah. You know, I was at gym and stuff. So Ace was in the show, but he was a photographer at the Lexington. And so that was, yeah, like it's all gone. Yeah. That, that, that culture. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one thing that Blossom really loves to talk about a lot is how our liberation is tied. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's one thing that I can really see with, uh, trans women and trans men and how we've lost spaces and how the patriarchy affects us both in different ways, but it's still harmful. And some of the work that, that you, right? 
That and part. some of the work that you have done um, throughout history, I mean, I, I've seen some photos. I mean, like they're like black and white photos from like you marching in the streets and like how, like, what was your early life in, in activism? Like, what did that look like? How did you get to act up? Like, what was that moment for you? Cause that's really important. You know, yeah. at least for me, I am really into uh, HIV research and mm -hmm. care, especially with what happened to me. And I needed a PEP uh, emergency incident. And um, Blossom actually does a lot of research in HIV as well with like folks like Gilead. So where did you find your path to act? I was living in San Francisco and um, I did, I did the first, um, it was actually the second, National March on Washington, where they had the AIDS quilt and all of that. And I was running a, a photo lab. And again, all my work was, you know, I was doing uh, Market Street Cinema. And I just uh, always been around, like, and sex workers. Sex workers and especially, like, butches sort of navigated towards each other. Because, one, it was very difficult to find jobs. Right. And if you were masculine identified, like, I was, you know, I just am who I am, right? Obviously, there's a problem because this is the easier way to identify as I do now. Always looking as masculine as you do is actually a very hard path, yeah. you know, just like to be a very effeminate man. So back in the 80s, it was in the 80s, which is not that long ago, it was very difficult to find a job. Now, thumbs become sex workers, which, you know, and then some chose to do it. Mm -hmm. I work in a lab nine to five, which I think, I mean, I'd be a horrible sex worker, you know, <laughs> so like, uh, I wouldn't make any money, first of all. But, you know, also these very smart women who are like, you know, like, you know, my partners, you know, I was. Well, that's, I mean, a kind of. We're sex workers. And so it, we, through that, there were so many people with AIDS. And so we're around that. So if you're in San Francisco and it's in the mid-80s mm -hmm. and you've done all of this, you really are seeing the people around you die. So that could yeah. be either mostly the gay men, but also because of the fact, you know, honestly, it, it, we were. We were punks. We were junkies. We, it, was, it was very risky. So seeing Street so many kids. people die. Yeah. Then when I moved to New York, um, I – the – person, you know, that I got the place on an old friend of mine, he was already, and this is 1988 uh, going on 89 when it first started, the original act up in New York um, on the west side. And so Aldo was part of it. And then my roommate, Ray Navarro, became a very big activist. And there's been a lot that put, was put out about Ray. Ray died, unfortunately, when he was 27. That was yeah. 93. He was my roommate. So so I do what I do best, which was picked up a camera. Me, Lola Flash was part of uh, Art Positive, Aldo Hernandez, um, Julie Tolentino, like some really big people who have gone on to be big. They were just like people in 20s, you know, college kids. I was just like crazy-ass junkie photographer who – just made a lot of, what I did was, I told you, I worked in labs mainly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked in labs. And then, um, yeah, and then, and then, you know, Annie, you know, uh, Diviana, you know, they're all sex workers, my partner, you know. So um, we could make a lot of art, and it was really about that scare and that nobody was helping us. And I think that the double-edged sword of that, of a, it's an, and it really is, is also looking at that's when queers got the power that they did. Because through all the death, through watching, you know, my friends in their 20s, my, my roommate, Ray, like I was the one who was like, that summer I was like, dude, because he, he was such, such a big activist. Yeah. So well known as an artist and activist. Like he wasn't telling anybody. And I was just like, but he was my roommate. He was like, Dude, there's no way there's something going on, right? And then we were taking the, the train across to uh, where we worked in, you know, Manhattan there on the west side. And he just collapsed going down the stairs and got meningitis like that. Oh. So to watch, like, yeah. young people, like, dying oh. around you and them not doing anything. But to enhance that power where, you know, and that's why we're not really fucked with now. Like... Disney and stuff, they're, they're like, oh, fuck no, I ain't taking away the queer's money, you crazy. Mm -hmm. Because it also came out to show we're united and 
if you put all the money together and you put the cause and you put all the political powers together, like just take Harvey Milk and stuff, you take all of the super intelligent, all of the political people, all of the men that run corporations, you know, like mainly talking big about white gay male money, right? Yeah. But of we know course. what we're talking about. Yeah, we know what yeah, we're talking we know, about. We know. We're talking oh, yeah. about the big white gay man, you know? <laughs> no, that's but his money that's, helps. But yeah. I'm so glad but the you money said helps. that because people who look at this need to hear that yeah. from someone like you. Yeah. And obviously, I am not a trans masculine person. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's quite clear. <laughs> Hit a button. Hit a button. Hit, give me a button. <laughs> <laughs> it's very I clear. I had to do that one. It's very clear. I am not a trans masculine person, but um, I wanted to go back to that trans masculine erasure. Yeah. Um, and if you feel comfortable jumping, no, in, I definitely um, not. Go for it. You know, in this day of in this day and time, with so much going on or whatnot, what do you think needs to happen to prevent? Trans masculine erasure, or what? What needs to change? What do you? How do you feel? I don't think that it's really ever been there. Like, like with death mm. of my daughter, the reason I was saying that and exploring that and exploring who we were and to talk about our experience, and is because nobody had done that. Nobody had even, and I mean, again, it's ancient history for trans people being vocal. And having a platform, certainly trans men, we still don't even have a platform. Yeah. So back in 2009, for 10 individual men to say, first of all, this is the death, right? This I'm putting to, to death. These are the social and the political and the patriarchal obligations on the parental obligations, which also I think resonated because everybody has that. It's more apparent if you're trans. Yeah. But every child grows up with that, you know? Yeah. So that makes it a more universal message. Now, as far as trans men, it, it nobody, and, and this is who I am, and this is, and each man breaks apart the experience. So, and now fast forward to, let's say, the other really big project. Um, and I did a lot of books. We did um, Fashioning Masculinity, like showing men that were, um, just that we were out there. And then we we're like, you know, like, actually, you know, come on. Trans men as a whole is a pretty good looking group of men. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Oh, trans. Right? Blossom we, can answer that for you. Oh, <laughs> right? oh. <laughs> we, you know, we do pretty hey, I've had my fair share of, of being in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> That's for another episode, though. Oh, I want to hear that. <laughs> I definitely gonna sit in the corner for that episode. <laughs> that was a long button. That, I know. That was, like, that was long. <laughs> the nothing. Hold on, we we can do. A, oh, it could be about oh, yeah. you. This is my favorite. <laughs> by the way, this is true. We just one. push buttons around like, here. Yeah, no, we play around. We do too much. <laughs> yeah, it's but um, to, to, yeah, as we digress yeah. into madness, yeah, let's no. get back to actual. <laughs> you know, yeah, <laughs> sorry, I love it. We're messy. You gotta have fun. Um. Gotta have fun. One thing that I wanted to add on with Blossom as well is about trans male erasure. Uh, I, I, I concur. I, I, I don't mean, think it's ever been there. I, Erase it from where? We don't even have it yet. Yeah, and and I <laughs> see that happen, unfortunately, far too often with uh, folks who've done work even in, in different uh, you know mediums and different forms, different businesses. Uh, they've kind of been erased after a certain point of their work. And it's, it's been kind of sad to see that. And that's why I've been really intentional about specifically bringing trans mass mm -hmm. folks and icons like yourself. So you can tell your story, how we can really help with that visibility. Because I mean, Blossom, the only way that I feel like we can do it is, is folk, moments like this podcast and really telling mm -hmm. folks stories. Um, because as he said, and as you know, it, it, there's no visibility for trans men in the way that Folks assume that there is. I mean, there's some media things that are happening. I was just about to ask you about that. Actually. Yeah, there's a few things that happen in media and a few, you know, influencers that popped up on TikTok. But in terms of resources, we've got nothing at the end of the day. And a lot of the work that I've seen, many different trans mask individuals um, just completely erased for some whatever reason, patriarchal structures, et cetera, et cetera, that we're fighting. So my question to you is, how do you think that we as a community can learn to express, again, 
better ways to fight the patriarchy is I feel like as trans men, we live in this weird world where it's like we have access to male privilege when we go to the liquor store. The guy is like, hey, what's up, bro? How you doing? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when we go into spaces like jobs or actual equitable spaces where we have to be known as who we are fully, we lose all that privilege. So mm. where do you feel that we can address that? And then how do you feel about that? And have you experienced that as well? Okay. I know it's a lot of questions. Okay, but Shane. Shane listen, I want, I want wisdom from, last episode. from you because I want, you know, the younger generation to actually hear because you've really been there at the beginning when everything was forming. And there's this conversation that the T should be separated from LGBT. And what you said mm -hmm. earlier just proves the reason why LGBT is together is because we were able to consolidate power. That's why ACT UP happened. So mm -hmm. again, it's a lot there to answer, but I'll give right. you the floor to, to let it go on whichever subject you wanted to jump in on. Well, I, I think one, the T has always been there and, and you want to keep it there. And that's why I do like y using the Q. I, I just don't go on to the alphabet more than that, but that only also represents me because I'm in a weird, I am a straight trans man. So you have to explain that to people. So, um, you know, yes, I, my gender is male but that has not changed my sexuality, which is that I have attracted to women, you know, um, and getting people to understand that, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it's no different than a um, a g gay man who transitions. No, he's not a lesbian. He's a man. Yeah. Therefore, he's a gay man. It doesn't. Mm -hmm change or make your transition ridiculous if your sexuality and your gender are so different. But so I think that, I think that's important. And I think it's important to be inclusive because when you keep dividing and dividing, you know, is, is how we lose power, which is the whole power structure, which is, you know, taking these playbooks from fascist communities Ooh, and, thank you. and they're doing that because of what you do, you divide and you divide yeah. and you, push one person against the other, which is classic of what's going on in this country now, which has gone on many times. And in this country, just in the 1940s, if people would know their history, which is very important. History repeats itself. Right. right. And if you That's think right. about yeah. the way the Nazis did it, first they came in and took out all of the trans and queer people. Exactly what we're seeing That's today. What, That's yeah. literally why I wrote it's this the book. the easiest yeah. to start with. Then they moved on. I am a trans Jew, so I get it on all sides. Now, the other thing is what you were asking about, like business and stuff. One thing is my art, and that's my focal point. And that's why also with like Transfigure, where the whole thing was like, you know, cutting it up into like a children's playbook, because the point is, it, you don't even know what you're discriminating against. Try to line up these bodies. Yeah. In fact, people with me even in front of them, and and that book, I was lucky that both of, you know, of all the trans work that I've done, and again, I'm representing myself, is I'm representing, hopefully, I'm speaking about an entire community. When I did all the work with sex workers and, and the book, you know, Market Street Cinema, hopefully I'm speaking for all of the women, you know. Um, but, you know, to, to have that, that, you know, that voice, there isn't, I think that people are prejudiced because they don't know. Now, I think there are places for people to know and places for them not to know. Um, I have this conversation debate a lot with my friends of like, well, if you're man, just, just be a man. And then why would you even tell anybody that you're trans? I mean, the whole point is to be a man and you're a man. And so, um, and th I think there's only two places that I, that I am vocal about that. Uh, and, I, and I'll tell you why. Um, okay, so one, and I've been married and divorced three times and then a fiance. I think I'm, I'm good in that department. I apparently am not good there. So one, though, would be with a sexual partner. Of course, you know? I mean, even for a one-night stand, of course. The next one would be with my artwork and getting a message across. Because again, that's my vehicle. That's my activism. That's the way I believe that. I believe in equality. I've always fought, you know, I, I was raised an activist, you know, by my parents, Jews. 
you know? So like, um, you know, there's that. Now, when it comes to my business or just walking down the street or whatever, nobody needs to know I'm trans and nobody needs to know that I'm trans with my cannabis company because it's none of your fucking business. Yeah. That has nothing to do with me being the best at picking out the best weed, hunting down the best mushrooms, hunting down the best ch- yes. chocolate edibles, Come on. hunting down the best vape pens so we can pull one out. providing right the now. plug. The plug is now available on Transparency Podcasts. <laughs> Are we interviewing we're gonna, the plug? We're going to pass these little suckers around for everybody. Stickers for everybody. Uh, you know, but, but anyways, that's because <laughs> it's supposed to be, woo, 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 right? out of my head. <laughs> no, seriously, this is for everybody. Oh, Feel free to pass you, those around. Yes. You. Oh, you're all the people that come in. But, um, so, so I mean that in the way that, that because I don't want that to color every aspect of my life. Yeah. Yes. It's very important. And that's why. I do the artwork that I do. That's why I'm so blessed that, you know, of the three films, one about when I was in the prison system that I was blessed enough to do with um, Cheryl Denier and Angela Davis. In fact, it's mainly just me and Angela Davis on the film. It's a short, but that's pretty sweet. Yeah. And I have really long, I, I naturally have blonde hair. I told a, a partner a long time ago, I go, oh yeah, well, I have blonde hair. And she's like, Dude, if you looked in the mirror, you have gray hair. You don't have black hair. I was like, what? Age just creeped up on you, right? You're like, oh, shit. <laughs> what? You're kidding me. Shit. Love it. Uh, but, um, you know, in that aspect, you know, it's it's important. But in for me as a business person, I also, people should know, like, that doesn't rule my life. I'm still an intelligent person. I'm still whatever I am. Yeah. I'm a business right. person. I'm an artist. I'm... You know, I'm in healthcare, you know, and one of the things, I'm a teacher, I'm a professor. Yeah. That should not just be like, oh, this is your identity. And that's why I think we lose a lot of uh, power. Just like when we were, you know, coming out, the whole thing, which was also, you know, when we were in New York and having to so I was living there. But, you know, that's when uh, Queer Nation was there and everything and the whole idea of outing. Now, forced outing is not cool, you know, but um, I do believe that's the same way with trans people. So, yes, you know, I'm trans. That's amazing. Great. And I also, you know, just built this cool-ass fucking electric car that's going to take over the world. Yeah. You know, like, it, you can get to be both things, you know. Um I'm, like I said, because I'm an activist and all, and I'm an artist, I just you choose to, and I've always chosen to use that platform. In fact, at first people weren't making the connection that Leon Mostavoy was Tracy Mostavoy. So I changed everything, and I don't have it on my website now. Well, I do in the first paragraph and stuff, was I had to redo everything because when I was... And that's when I first got to like a lot more like people coming out and being like, oh my God, wait, you're Tracy, the one who's already had so many publications, but as feminist, as act up, as a lesbian erotic photographer was my main yeah. thing. Yeah, because you had an identity on as a butch lesbian. Yeah, you came yeah. Out, it was, so. And there was a lot of activism. And, and, uh, yeah. yeah, and it was all about like, you and know. people knew you from that. As yeah, well, they yeah. knew me really well from, from on our backs. Yeah, I, re- I really want to ask this question. How do you feel about people who are not transmasculine fetishizing of transmasculine bodies? You know, um, and I think it's really important that I ask this, especially for those that are watching this that are not transmasculine. Like, what what are your thoughts around that? You mean people that are um, doing it as for themselves because they want to look like that or people that are fantasizing for like, like a sex I feel like people that are object. doing it just to be annoying and just to kind of just, I'm trying to figure out how to say it, just fetishizing the bodies of trans masculine people. You know, um, I have a firm belief that we as trans people, we're not characters. Right. But we are treated like characters to cis people and 
although I'm not a trans masculine person, I'm really curious to know what that experience looks like in the trans masculine community and like what are your thoughts around that? I think that um you know it's it's very much this I don't know if it, if it still is. Again, I'm I'm very much older, and I came out a long time ago, and they were still like very strict. It was very much like like my friend Max Valerio wrote Testosterone Piles, which was the first big book about it. And we Max and I had friends. There's pictures of Max when Max was still Anita in that book that I took because we were just old, like super, you know, like butch punk rock dykes together, you know, artists yeah. and in the streets of San Francisco, like I was saying, you know, yeah, so. Yeah. So anyways, he left and came and stayed with me in New York because he was getting bullied by the lesbian community. Really? It was very much, it was very difficult. Like or my, or like I'm or saying, yeah, yeah, like, or my ex-wife saying to me, you're not a feminist anymore. The one who was saying that she lost her identi identity to me, transitioning, and me being like, look at all my artwork. Like, I have published... Tons of published work saying that I'm a feminist. All of a sudden, I'm not, yeah. you know, because I'm trans man. When you were saying that, I really think that we are. I think that we're the best secret weapon for the trans community. Yeah, I That's agree the way we you. should be used. At least that's how I— a secret weapon. I, I, we yeah. we pass. People don't know. And not just only, like, because lots of trans women pass. It, you know, right. it's, it's, it's very few. And it also depends, just like trans men. Yeah. You're going through puberty. It's not like insta guy, insta woman, you know. Yeah. So it depends how far. There's your also genetics at play in certain and things. And your as genetics well. yeah. and like, yeah. if your dad was short, you're going to be yeah. short. You know, it's, I'm short. Sure. What? My yeah. dad was short. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If he like, went like, bald, you're going to go bald too. Yeah. Like that's just that's <laughs> how like, it is. My dad yeah. is a tiny Jewish man. He was only five eight himself. Like Jesus Christ. Yeah. The same height as my dad. My black daddy. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't have a lot, a lot of chance here, you know? Yeah, that's what I say. Yeah. Oh, my God. Say something to my them. black daddy. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, yeah, you know, but but I think that also, you know, being the, because of the patriarchy and because mm -hmm. there's still so much sexism, you can have no really masculine features, but grow that first couple of years of like, you know, like, Fur that you get under, it starts under your neck, and that you hope for it to come up. <laughs> yeah, it's the same for every trash guy, right? So, yeah. so um, nothing and, like and, a good and, neck beard. Yeah, right. You get that good <laughs> neck beard. Like going. I got more hair here than I feel like <laughs> yeah, I got yeah, here. I was like, yeah. damn. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you like, grow first, and yeah, and your neck okay. for some reason. I don't At know least for why. Me, genetically, yeah, I got yeah, more under like, here. Gotcha. So many guys. In fact, that's why when I was doing death of my daughter and. You so say you have to transition back into being a girl, right? But if you look at the pictures, they're, you know, like hairy guys, like Max had a full beard. And and uh, and some of the guys were like, oh, my God, you know how long it took me to grow this mustache? Oh, my God, I got to shave off my mustache. The mustache is hard, a hard yeah. one. But, um, well, now I'm old and now it's, like, out of control. But um, so, you know, I think that, you know, pointing that out and it's a double-edged sword in that Thank way you. because you pass, which yeah. is great, mm -hmm. and then you lose sense of your community because community gets almost mad at you. And support really? and a lot yeah. of, yeah, it's, it's something. It's a government's a double-edged sword like that, yeah? Wow. Yeah, it's something that I've really wanted to talk about and I'm glad that you're bringing this up because it's something that I've definitely struggled with where it's like, I've done a lot of work in different ways pre-transition and after transition it's almost kind of like a damned if you do damned if you don't situation because it's again it's sit down and be quiet in the same way as before transition which is patriarchal structures but at the same time i have to live up to the pay, the, the structures of you know being the breadwinner being this being that being macho protector and all of these things that are thrown on us but at mm -hmm. the same time we don't have the same structural support that a lot of cis mm -hmm. men actually have that is to actually fully actualize male privilege. Uh, a lot of trans men that I've spoken with, uh, men of color, uh, trans men that are white, it, it, this has gone across the spectrum is it's almost like a false male privilege. It's like the ideology that, again, we can go to the liquor store and it's fine, but again, when we get into deeper sides where folks do find out we're trans, it's, it's this idea that we are just 
not even worth the time, the investment, or or even the visibility. And a lot of resources kind of get lost in that sense. Mm-hmm. And it's this weird structure that it's hard to kind of address because at the same time, I'm fully aware of my white male privilege that I do carry. But at this the same time, I'm 100% trans. I definitely have a right. vagina. <laughs> like, even though some folks are like, are you trans? Yes, yes. Where's the button for that? Bruh. Wait. <laughs> wow. I said, bruh. Wait, why did you say not fair? <laughs> I don't know. We'll push your buttons. We're bu- it is not fair. Actually. Actually, exactly. Actually, no, hold on. It is not fair. Because I'm a size 13 in men's shoes, and God robbed wow. me, okay? I would have had a your, Drake size. Your feet are bigger okay? than mine. Okay, like, wow. I would have been like this, yeah, okay? Yeah, your so, feet are bigger than mine. Now that yeah, I think about it. Thank God so, my feet grow. I got robbed in that sense, so that button is actually accurate, shit. okay? <laughs> but that's the thing. is like we are still trans at the end of the day. Yeah, we right. still have resources. Um healthcare, a lot of the gaps in the services just do not exist. Like I still have a lot of fear about getting older as a trans man, because like, are they going to properly even know how to take care of me? Uh, My doctor still doesn't know what the fuck she's doing. I'm because I don't want to go to, Mm. I could go back to the center where I started a million years ago and everybody goes. However, I live in Claremont. I don't live close anymore. And I've been doing this for so long. And it's just like, and I have insurance, not great insurance, right. California cover, go Obama, <laughs> but I got insurance, right? So um, I'm like, I can get it on my insurance. My doctor still fucks it up every time. Yeah. my Even my shot. How many times did I tell you? No, I take my shot once a week. Once a month and still, as I'm, I'm like, lady. Yeah. No, I have this similar issue. Lady. That's why I went off testosterone, actually, Shit, is the dude. inconsistency of care because it's just yeah. not there. And I was afraid that I'm like a guinea pig getting shot in the dark to a degree because there's just a lot of work mm. that still needs to be done for yeah. trans men uh-huh. specifically. Yeah. You know what you were talking about? I think that, yes, there's there's health and all of that, but really what I think stops trans men and uh, is, is not so much if people find out if they're trans or not. I know a few people. I don't let anybody know. I was much more open about it. Yeah. With my, first of all, it's my company. I do the fuck I want, you know. But you know, um, people weren't liking it. I don't want to lose business. I don't care what you think of me. Give me your money. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know say the most insulting trans things around, like you know, all of this going down, and a trans person tried to teach my child, I cut their dick off, and I could be like, "You're talking to a trans guy." Yeah. Or I could be like, "Give me that two hundred dollars. I'm backing up out of your driveway." Yeah. Yeah. Like, it. Honestly, to hear you say that, Shane, really just um, broke my heart to hear that. Um, Especially, and I'm thinking about trans masculine individuals who don't live in California, who don't have access to insurance. And we're in such a political climate where our trans care is in danger. Right. There are states that are literally trying to ban trans care. Yeah, And our trans masculine community will be affected by this. Well, and yeah, both, both, I think. I think that's evenly across yeah, the board. But what, I, what I think it the is. real problem is, is the way we're socialized. The reason trans men do not Ooh, talk about it. Oh my God, we're having this conversation. Actually, yeah. You don't understand. Yeah. There, This is the conversation okay. we have in the living rooms, but if we're going to do it, okay. let's do it because okay. yeah. oh, I'm ready I'm, for let it. Let me tune yeah. in. Like, let, me, let me get my yeah. stuff together. Let me pull this it is okay. what This is what I I think forever is that the way Let's add some allegedly just in case for the Twitter comments. Oh, allegedly. Yeah, yeah. allegedly. Uh, well, this is his opinion and our yeah, opinion. My opinion. Yes. This is an <laughs> opinion I wouldn't show. Say, I wouldn't say allegedly men are treated with a different psychology, little boys, as opposed to little girls. So even though it's getting more even, it is not the same psychology that you get. You are not treated the same. The expectations on you are not the same. And as much as my parents, I was very lucky. Growing up, I mean, what, when I was a little kid and knew I was a boy and asked for like, what was that, wiffle ball and a tea bat yeah. at five? I was talking like 67. My mom let me do that. My parents let That's me play basketball. Huge. My parents let me I was me doing it in the like 90s and it was still huge back then. So the right. fact that Once you were doing it back then. I was yeah. clear, my mom stopped talking to me. But when I was yeah. just a tomboy, it was fine. So I was very fortunate. However, that is not the same as being socialized. And so the reason why I think that trans women are more successful than trans men is that it's not so much the way you look. Most trans men pass. 
there's a lot of short guys. I know cis guys that are shorter than me, yeah, right? That's shout out to all the deal. short kings out there. Yeah, yeah right. You know, our yeah. Short kings. You know? Um, so I don't think it's just like there's a lot of tall women out there. So I don't think it's oh, that tall so much. Tall women? Right. What? And exactly. most of them are models, to be oh, fair. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they're all models. So yeah. that's great for you guys. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm a tall woman. Yeah, you know, right? See, you're on your way to being a supermodel. I don't know. Like Thank right you. now, booked right after this. Uh, booking booked starts. Busy. Booking starts. <laughs> yes. um, but, but the way that. You are then, if you are socialized as a child, the most formative years, as we know, are from zero to five. And you are socialized from zero to five because your parents don't even really know. They're just going along with whatever, but more or less. Yeah. Your social cues, everything are these cues. Mm -hmm. You already have this idea in your head. Yes, I perform. Yes, I do this. Yes, I'm the red blah, 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 blah. Okay, so even though you know that you're a woman, you still have that psychology. Now, trans gotcha. men gotcha. were not socialized like that. So all of a sudden, and it is very much a double-edged sword, especially in relationships, let me tell you, three times divorced, um, is that even though, you know, they, they, they know you're trans and all that, you are still, a, like all women, they do want that security. And obviously no men are out slaying lions right now, right? How are you showing it? You're showing it financially. You're showing it with that kind of cushion, with that sort of like, of course, all the other things you can do. And, you know, yeah, you know, watch me, you know, like on the jungle gym here, the beach, yada, yada. Not the jungle gym. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meet us at the jungle gym. Yeah. <laughs> I got that's where the mushrooms are at. Yeah, right. Watch me swing. I swing so high. Is that <laughs> There's the new slogan for the yeah, new mushroom right. bag. <laughs> I totally. You know, um, but but see, that's 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 what I mean. Is that so? So it's difficult because we weren't raised like that, and to then change that psychology. Um, you know, I <clears throat> my parent, my parents, my father. Both of them, they're very much feminist. My sister took over my dad's company okay. as a CEO. <clears throat> I mean, it was a school organization, but we had like 75 schools. I mean, they have more now that she lost her job. But, yeah. um, you know, so it wasn't so much that, but it's still this idea that you're not, like not even with like how to be assertive in yeah. a relationship or with a partner or how to be assertive with man to man. I got really messed up, you know, and, 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 and women go through the same thing when, because women have a different, you, they do have a different language. Yeah. You grow up with a different language yes. and yeah. you can walk in and think, you know, this used to really fuck me up when I first transitioned because I was sort of like, you know, my wife at the time was just like, oh my God, you're like Instaman. I like really, oh. she, and it freaked her out because she was like, like within like nine months, I just like, Nobody knew it. I was total dude. I got top surgery like right away within like the second month. Yeah. So like, um, but I didn't know how to act around like straight dudes. Do you know the stuff. urinal rule? Yeah. Oh, like like you that, had to like, learn the yeah. urinal. Oh, rule? yeah. Where well, you, yeah, you're not like, supposed to stand next to the guy. There's supposed to be a urinal. Yeah, actually, you can't, you, oh, like really? all. Yeah, no, there's all these like little things in the male world that I had to learn in my early twenties. Yeah, like, like, usually, you learn like when yeah. you're twelve and you're like in middle school. But there's like these uh, rules for men that they engage in certain ways in and certain and spaces, and, we, and, we, and no one can teach you these things. You kind of have to know them or be taught through your childhood of your right. upbringing and the way you interact. Like, and I, I one thing I do appreciate. Uh, about guys, but I've always, and this is true, that if you're trans, you know, like born trans, you have you're born with the psychology, the brain of that sex, not yeah. the sex of your body. So I've never really, I never even called myself a girl when I was female body. In fact, I've always referred to myself as female body, never a female, never a woman. Gotcha. Yeah. Female body. I'm glad you said that, and it reminds me of a conversation that Laith Ashley, who we love so much was talking about. I I the way that you explain being socialized was so interesting because I've never heard it in that way. The way I remember Leif talking about it was trans men are socialized as female. And so usually they're the ones that have to sit in the back, not say anything. They have to be more of the nurturer and all of the things or whatever. And when I think of that, I'm like, 
oh, I never really thought of that. But the way that you explained it was a whole different perspective. And as someone who is not trans masculine, I find it very interesting and I'm grateful to learn all that. So thank you both for doing that. Now, you know, I'm going to have to switch it because I'm going to be a little messy. Because <laughs> this is the Transparency Podcast Show. By the way, we're not sponsored by Red Bull yet, but if Red Bull likes to sponsor us, this is my favorite flavor. I like the pineapple version. So, yes, let's get into the tea. Yeah, Hold on. Honey, we got to get a good Oh, look, the well, there's only 15 minutes, so you better get yeah, the dirty you stuff. You already know. Which one? Get the evil laugh. <laughs> oh, that's shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, can't imagine. Now, okay, now you now. already know what it's about to be. Now, you were known to hang around an interesting trans masculine person. He calls himself a transsexual. He was in adult entertainment. Um, and one thing I would say, shout out to all of our trans masculine sex workers out there. We are pro ho around here. Yeah. 100%. Hello. 100%. Can we get something? We yes, pro ho yes, around yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> <Drum roll. laughs> We're very pro ho around here. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you were known to hang around a certain trans masculine individual or whatnot. And on a personal level, I think, uh, because of my personal experience with him, I think he's despicable. I think he's disgusting. I think that he's very transphobic. And I feel Wait, like. Wait, girl, what's the question though? I feel like. <laughs> I feel like. Who are you talking about? Who oh, could should this we be? drop a name? I mean, <laughs> like I said, we're not sponsored by Red Bull yet, but we are uh, being brought to you by Red Bull at the moment because we are, we got wings to this, I think. Yeah. I think that this individual who's trans masculine, and I'm sure he's going to watch this episode very clearly because I'm going to make a reaction video with the thumbnail <laughs> of them on it. Um, in my personal view, because of the lying and the sneaking that they've done or whatever, I don't think they're a great person. And it is what it is. But you used to hang with that person or, or be associated with that person. And I guess my question is, what shifted for you to not be friends with this type of person or attract people like this particular trans man, who's white, by the way, into your life. What happened? <laughs> What's the tea? Go and spill it. We, we ready. <laughs> um, okay. Yes! <laughs> I probably got one. <laughs> um, okay, so here we go. Um, so first of all, uh, myself and this person being the same age, having transitioned a long time ago, being from like similar, you know. Um, you guys were like brothers, kind of. <laughs> at least that's yes. how I perceived it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Looking alike. Allegedly. Uh, you know. Sounding alike, too. Uh, Personality is very different, though. Them? We see that, though. What? Yeah. Personality is very different. Yeah. yeah. See that. So much more different. beautiful. That's why you read the book. You don't just look at the cover. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, you know, and that plays back into trans masculinity. Sorry, I'm just adding more of a delay because we have to have the dramatics. We have to because we yeah. know it's about to come and I'm giving you more time to think. No, so. I know. I just, it's pretty simple. So, we, we got together with this concept uh, being, like I said, I told you, I own a cannabis delivery service and I believe in the properties of cannabis. Yeah. So does this individual. Support his we business both, as well. All your cannabis should be purchased now yeah, by him. Yes. So that's how that works. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, you get, you exactly, yeah. exactly. And we'll get the links on uh, it on the video yeah, for you later. Really? So we'll have that. So um, anyways, <clears throat> so we had this idea to start because of Hold this on, person's, because of this person's uh, we hadn't spoken for a long time. I do have my name on my teacup. Oh my I'm coming for prayer. Yeah, there was, there was a lot of um, there's a lot of crazy gossip from like the '90s about this person and even this person and me and my partner at the time and lots of fun stuff. So, um, anyways, we didn't talk. Then we then we hooked up somehow. On the internet. It was asking this question about a dog, and I'm a dog lover. I am a dog daddy. You know. People yeah, I remember me. you would bring your dogs to the events. Yeah, and uh, everywhere. It was cute as yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, people ask me if I adopt. I said, you know, that's my biological dog. Yeah, that's your baby. That's, yeah, that's my son. Yeah. I did not yeah. adopt him. So anyways, we get together and we have this idea to do a cannabis company just focused. And this is a long time ago. This is like, I mean, for cannabis, this is 2017. Like, yeah. no, it's not even. It's still Prop 215. This yeah. is like 
the golden, golden West, baby. Where the wild, taxes wild weren't that West. bad. Remember when the taxes weren't that bad and they yeah, still put it, so it they put it in a baggie and it was like, yeah, it didn't it have to be all so sealed good, and everything. They just know? stapled it and gave it to you. Yeah, it was just back, back yes. when we were. He's so detailed. Listen, <laughs> I've been in the cannabis I, industry yeah. a long time too. I just yeah. don't talk about it too much. Okay. No, no, no. I've always been legal. In fact, I still am paying back corporate taxes from those days. Yeah. Mm. Anyways, yes. I am very legal. I'm a Virgo. I'm very by the books. Yes. So, um, anyways, we start this company. We love and Virgo. And it's the whole idea of for our, our community and all. Then COVID hits and all, and I'm expanding with my, my delivery services separate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is just my, my passion project, right? And so things are going along. And then I decide like, okay, we could expand and I, you could be a partner on my delivery service. I already have a partner mm -hmm. um, on paper. Like yeah. I said, we are S-Corp, LLC, all that bullshit. Yeah. Um, Trans man in business, look at that. Right, right, yeah. right. You got to do it right. Do it right. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to be in. So Listen, much I'm just hell. impressed that, like, so again, we never thought trans yeah. men would be here. I even have a yeah. podcast. Like, we have like equipment. It's like what we have privilege. So sorry. I, know, I just I, I get excited it's, when you it's tell really me. Really in, important. Yeah. Um. Anyways, he does not my my partner that I've been with my delivery partner does not think it's a good idea. So I. Oh go, really? Okay, your 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 partner didn't think it was a good idea to, to include him and expand with him. Ooh, let me see. So anyways, I decided to anyways. And what this person, of which we speak of. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> of who shall not be named. Ooh. Um, not Voldemort. <laughs> yeah, so um, he who shall not be named. So um, what, oh what my God. happened was. You are not being good. Maybe we didn't, know. we didn't realize that. It's really hard. Like my business is open 80 hours a week. Yeah. It's retail, 11 hours no, a day. No, you go hard. It's a wow. lot of yeah. fucking work. He's a hustler. I, like I he, mean, this is, yeah. this is for real. Yeah. This is taxes. This is reporting to the state of California monthly. Yeah. This is, this is vendor purchasing. Five to ten thousand dollars a week. This is a business business. This is on the phone with all of the seniors who are like, "What? No, I don't know how to use a website." Do you want me to name off all two hundred like different types of weeds we have? Yes. Wait, lady. You know, it's just a lot of work. Yeah. This individual that we're speaking of didn't did have the popularity and stuff, and that's how we sort of always had it. Was that I was the guy behind the scenes. I am. I'm the Virgo. I'm the business guy. There's the face of of got it. It makes got it, right? It, yeah, business wise, it makes sense. It made sense. So what were, happened yeah. though was it was crashing and burning. It was not his mm -hmm. money. It was all my money. Wow. Okay. And so wait, you paid me for that DJ gig then? That was out of okay. both of our money. Okay. I mean, when I expanded, I expanded and put another fifty thousand okay. dollars to expand okay, the company. Okay. Wow. Which was all my money. Wow. He didn't have money. Wow. Daddy put in some money. His daddy put in some money. Wow. My daddy stopped speaking to me 15 years before he died. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, you don't get it, bro. Like, this is me. This is little tranny guy working my ass off. Coming from money. the mud like a lily pad. Yeah. I don't, right now. My parents yeah. just own me. My parents stopped speaking Same. to me. Same. I came from Scientology, dude. So we, I listen. Yeah, you I, know? Come on now. My parents left me nothing. All of my, nothing. everything came from these fingers and yeah. I, somehow I got it. I don't everything know how. Everything I had. Building yeah. the business, every yeah. goddamn penny I and had. And that's why I respect I you so did much. I myself. Yeah. No handouts, no rich girlfriends. Nope. No rich daddies. Nope. <laughs> nothing. None of that shit. That's why I wanted you so on the got, show, so dude. So I got upset that they weren't taking equal responsibility. Mm. In fact, no responsibility. Damn. Shocking. <laughs> Where, where's the thing? <laughs> Oh, I was looking for the other one. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're still learning the buttons, y'all. Don't judge us. <laughs> Where is it? Which one is it? We always do oh this God, every episode. It, it, Life's not fair. Didn't you just there we go. No, wait, That's no, no, no. not fair. <laughs> we're still learning the buttons. <laughs> Where is, is it this one? No, there's... Oh, wait. There, there it is. Dun, dun. So it's the middle one. We got to yeah. remember that. It's the middle one. We're learning. Y'all, it's the middle one. It's the it's middle a, button. We get to learn together. It's a one take show, y'all. So, like, yeah, it's all a process. That's why it's called Transparency Podcast because we do not do editing at all. This is live. It's all one about the show. journey, not getting there. Exactly. We might never get there. The journey. 
Sorry, I play with the buttons. Tell us how the story ends. Where did we go yes. from there? Yes. We had a big falling out over that. Yeah. Um, and parted ways. And I, I did not realize that even if you, and again, Virgo, Virgo, everything by the books. I set up bank accounts, more LLCs. I didn't realize since I'm the signer on everything, because an LLC, and the reason why you do that is you're not liable, and it's not, and it does not come back on me personally. Oh, no. Yeah. However, I am the signer on everything. Again, I am the business person behind the scenes. Right. He's the you're face. You're the, the CEO. Of the I CEO. still owe. I some of the credit cards are gone after this time. I had to pay everything back. I. So make sure not, to purchase all your cannabis from this transmaster yeah, business yeah, owner I, so I, we can get support. that. Yes. yes. Support. Just send him Venmo I'm money. You know, we'll find the link somewhere. We'll send it out. Endeavor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So he so it just sort of walked off and left me with all the debt. Okay. And um, so I, we don't talk. Where, um, <laughs> did you write that song? I was going to say, where can we support you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I have, oh, here. Best Buds Delivery? Yes. Yes. Best Buds Delivery. Yes. Can you actually spell it for us like the dot com exactly yes. so we can get it? Okay. Is it B-E-S? Yeah. So it's B-E-S-T and then Buds, B-U-D-Z, okay. Buds. And, but the, um, uh, where well, you can order right off the menu and everything. Ooh. And if you send in your name and stuff, I'll even send you a cute little. Uh, Mention the like, podcast yeah, as well. Yeah, the podcast. You know? And then I'll put a little code on it. And that's bbdelivery.net. Okay. It can't have Buzz Buzz, which it was, because Buzz, apparently, the CDC they and and the powers that be that that do like AT they won't let you have it. Yeah. Spectrum. Really? Yeah. They they wow. think that it's a cannabis company, and so oh. they won't let me advertise. Wow. So I have to do all this. Yeah, wrap around. It's it's not. Look at that. There we go. We got it. We got it. it on screen for yes. you right there. Hey. So that's, that's all me. of your stuff. Yeah. Look at all that stuff. Yeah. Wow. And that's just my special. Yeah. Oh, look at woo. Yeah. Shane, we need to rack up on now. Listen, I invited the now. plug. Okay. Now the community is aware of the plug. <laughs> the plug has some good stuff. Here's the menu. So we're gonna get sativa. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna need an eighth of the uh, blueberry oh, and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. also the the Kush there that looks really good. And I need two vape pens and then Blossom, you needed edibles, correct? Yes. Yeah. So we're gonna need that whole menu. And also, folks, go ahead and actually head over to that website. Take a look at all of his work because, again, something that. I, I want to support because yeah, I have this alleged true. attention and platform. I want yeah. folks to actually see I would like and that. become the plug for community. You and you're actually that. buying from a trans masculine individual. Right. Like yes. what? And it's it's legal. It's through a business license. It's mm -hmm. everything. I is know. Good. Like, a licensed trans. Right? Man. Like what the, like it's crazy because again, like. No, it's difficult. I, I'm in this weird elder millennial situation where like I have this weird bridge of my upbringing as a trans man where I can really relate heavily to how you were kind of navigating the world. Because when I grew up, it was still very much uh, exactly what you said. Like, it's like, there wasn't even really the discussion of non-binary. There wasn't a discussion of anything. It was just like, if you're going to transition, you go hardcore man. And that's all you, that's your only opportunity. And then you do it lone wolf style because there's no resources for it. And you just figure it out. And then maybe you live to 35, 40, if you're lucky. Mm. And the thing that I love about your story, first of all, is that you are an icon, that you're here, that you're past the age of 40, and that inspires me. It inspires oh, Only a one year past 40. Listen, <laughs> listen, I know, I know, I know. But at the same time, like, looking at oh. everything- <laughs> <laughs> Not the producer jumping in. I know, right? <laughs> We've been waiting. I tried right? so hard to be convincing. I just, I really appreciate, like, what you've done for community. And I really want folks to know more about you and look you up and find out more about you. And just, you know, it's unfortunate sometimes those business deals didn't fall out the way that they maybe were planned to. But what I do remember is when I would see you in community, the times that I saw you personally coming in and, and working with me and other community members and really trying to bring this like bridge that you were trying to cross. And I really hope that this episode also brings some more visibility to your business so that we can get you some, yes. some of that yeah. debt taken care and of, I, and right? I will, and I will and, say this. You, and wait, oh, and put ahead. up my, my website, Leon Mostavoy. 
Yes. Dot net. Yes, and we'll get that up for you. So that you us. can. Yes. There you go. So yeah. that you can buy my artwork there. Yeah. I have a new show coming up. And it's sexy stuff too. I mean, it's really good. It's it's Definitely high quality. It's it's yeah, there's actors. There's there's trans men out there, y'all. Like you yes. just gotta actually dig deep. And we're gonna continue to bring more and more and more trans men here and other activists and other community leaders and influencers, yeah. more tea and drama. And Blossom, I feel like you have one more question for Leon before we go to Yeah, no, it's just more of a comment because yeah. you know, the person that we were talking about or whatever, I've had such a mm very vile experience with him, but meeting you, sitting here with you and just seeing how pure your heart is and your spirit is, I just, Thank you are you such a friend. fresh air. Thank you, appreciate it. Yeah. support you, yeah. we love you, and you know, this is what liberation looks like. Yeah. Being able to sit here and have this conversation, and although I am not a trans masculine person, thank you so much for having me here yeah. to learn and yeah. listen and just grow. And this is the type of environment I want every trans woman, non-binary person, trans man, everybody in our trans community to see us, us sitting here, listening to each other, learning from each other. And there's no overstepping or anything like that because we need that unity now more than ever. Yeah. So I just wanted to say that. That's fantastic. And, <laughs> and just one last thing then is that I want to say that it is so special because again, with the separation, it seems like then to separate and trans men and trans women wanting to separate. I'm like, yeah. why? That's why I wanted Blossom on the show. I mean, and it's I want her so part of important to have a trans yeah. woman support trans men. It's not, doesn't happen very And it's often. rare. And that's why I yeah. really appreciate you, Blossom. I know. We yeah. are not, we are not loved by, by you ladies. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. No, but honestly, Blossom is setting the example. And I think I've actually seen kind of a shift in community. And I just thank you because I have seen, you know, even influencers and stuff actually start to talk about trans men more. And you're part of the conversation that has actually changed that. So thank you. again, in a weird sense, as we talked in that Sabelle episode that like, it's weird to say as a black woman, you have privilege in that space because in most spaces you don't, but I just thank you for sharing your voice and also supporting us trans guys. Cause yeah. you know, we want to do some cool stuff in the world too. And I, I love seeing, you know, older trans men. Uh, that was one thing that I interviewed Ezra. He's like, you don't see older trans men. And I really wanted to bring you on here again, thank just you. so folks know that you exist, you've done the work yeah. and you have a great just personality. And I just, I appreciate how you represent and you show up as a trans man, especially as a white trans man. Yeah. So thank, thank you. you. Yeah. I appreciate it. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you both so much. I think this is awesome. Love the work you're doing. Keep it up. Keep going. <laughs> yes. Shut All right. Right. And that's going to wrap it up for us, folks. I just want to say thank you so much for watching today. I hope you learned a bunch. Please look up Leon. Please get some cannabis from this man so we can get all that debt taken yeah. care of for you. And <laughs> right. if you're looking for any links or anything that'll be down, make sure to hit that subscribe button, Blossom, because we want to get that thousand mm -hmm. subscribers. We are almost, almost at that mark. And another thing, I really want to shout out to our producer, Solomon, at the Podcast Palace here. Excuse me, I said Podcast Palace, not the Podcast Palace. Uh, he's been a great support Love for us here. It's and he's podcast. Got a, it's Podcast Place. See, and I got it wrong. <laughs> I got it wrong. Listen, I didn't even get my name right okay Solomon so we're still learning one take show yeah it's really a one take show yeah okay, well you did <laughs> right yourself at the wrong day exactly <laughs> I did I did but I am Shane Ivan Nash this is Blossom C. Brown and this was the Transparency Podcast stay tuned for more we did not do our oh <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>